Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on in the blocks and in this video, we're going to build a blockchain IDE by using Tmux and Vim. Compared to normal IDEs, they're going to be three main advantages. First, it's going to be much faster because you never touch your mouse, but you only use a keyboard shortcut for all the actions. Also, command line tools are usually much more snappy than visual environments. The second advantage is that using command line tools is much more powerful than using visual tools because you have much more features and much more flexibility. For example, you can compose different tools together, which is not possible with visual tools. Number three, it's much easier to customize. All you need to do is to write your option in a text file and you can also share this text file with other developer or copy the configuration of other developers. And lastly, it's also more healthy. So I know it sounds funny to say this, but it's actually true because when you use a command line tools, you never have to use your mouse. You only keep your finger on your keyboard and that's much more healthy for your finger and for your wrist. If you're a young developer, you might not be aware of this, but there is actually a sort of professional injury for developers, which is called RSI. And this is a sort of problem to your joint. And this happens if you use your keyboard a lot, which is the case of developers. So if you get into the habit of not using your mouse and switching to command line tools, then your wrist and your fingers will thank you in the years to come. All right, so now let's see what is Tmux. Tmux is a terminal demultiplier. It allows you to create some sub-terminal in a single window terminal. So you can create any combination of windows, resize their size, and it's very convenient when you want to run different development tools and have a global view on everything. To install it on Mac, you can do it with the Brew Package Manager. And on Ubuntu, you can use AppGet. And Vim is a model code editor. It works only with your keyboard. And depending on the mode you're in, you can either write code or navigate your code. So contrary to other code editor, it doesn't have its own window, but you have to start it inside a terminal. So like for Tmux, you can install it with Brew on Mac or with AppGet on Ubuntu. All right, so how we can combine Tmux and Vim. So for this, I've prepared an example of Ethereum decentralized application using the Truffle framework. So he, here I have my Truffle project. And the first thing to do is to start a Tmux session. So inside my terminal, I type Tmux. And here you will see the yellow bar at the bottom. So that means I am in Tmux and then I will be able to create some sub windows. So I'm going to do this by creating a window on the right. OK, so this will be for my code. For example, if I want to edit a smart contract, and then on the left, I'm going to run a local development blockchain with Truffle develop. I'm going to deploy my smart contract inside my blockchain. And I'm also going to create a new terminal because I need to run the front end. So you can not only subdivide vertically, but also horizontally. And after you can also resize everything. So I'm going to go inside my folder for the front end. I'm going to install the dependency. And after I'm going to run the Webpack server. All right. So now let's start Webpack with npm start. OK, so my server has started. So now every time I modify one of my file in the front end, so for example, client source app.js, if I make a change here and I save it, then it's going to reload my front end. And also, if I do a mistake, I will see the error. So let me do an error. OK. And here I can see the error message failed to compile. So it's very, very easy to develop this way. So on my right, I develop the code. And on my left, I can manipulate smart contract. And below, I can see the error message for the front end. And actually, you can either further subdivide everything into other window if you need it. And also keep in mind that on my screencast, the size of the screen is reduced. So this is actually only 50% of my screen. But on your screen, you'll have much more room. 
a few tips so in order to navigate between different windows so i use some shortcut and i use the same shortcut as for vim so for vim if you want to go so for vim when you want to move in so for vim when you want to move in your source files so you use four keys hjk hjkl and what I did is I mapped the same shortcut for tmux. So to indicate to the terminal that you have a tmux command, you need to press Control B by default, but you can customize this. And after to change terminal, so if I want to go on the left, so I will press Control B and then H to go up K, to go down J, to go right L. So exactly like in Vim, so there is no context switching problem between Vim and tmux. And also a cool thing you can do with tmux is enlarge one of your window. So for example, let's say I'm in Vim and I want to split my screen between two files because uh, I'm working on something a bit complex, but I don't have enough space like this. So what I can do is temporarily enlarge this window by doing control B plus Z. So temporarily it take all the space and after I'm going to split my screen in Vim with the SP command. All right, so now I can see my spot contract on the left and my front end on the right. And when I'm done with this view, I can just press Control B and Z again. And here we're back to normal. And the last trick I'd like to show you is sometime you are working in Vim and you need to quickly execute something on the command line, but you don't want to necessarily create a new terminal just for that. So in Vim, you can put the current process in the background by pressing Control Z. Then you clear your screen with Control L and then you run whatever command you want, like npm install ls or whatever. And when you want to get back into Vim, then you press FG. So to foreground the backgrounded process and boom, you're back into Vim. I also use a lot of customization in my Vim and Tmux and if you want to have exactly the same setup, you can see my configuration file in this repo. So the configuration for Tmux is called .tmux.conf and for Vim it's called .vimrc. So if you're not currently a user of either Tmux or Vim, I don't necessarily recommend you to learn both at the same time. I would start by using Vim for a few weeks or even a few months. And after once you start to feel comfortable, then you can think of adding Tmux to your workflow. It's also a bit overwhelming to remember all the keyboard shortcuts. So for that, you can Google what is called cheat sheet. So they are cheat sheet for Tmux where you can have like a quick recap of the main shortcuts. And the same thing exists for Vim. By the way, if you are learning blockchain development, you might be interested in my best tips for Solidity. So this is a free mini course that you can access by following the link inside the description. All right, now you know everything about how to build a blockchain IDE using Tmux and Vim. Thanks for watching and see you for the next video.